Welcome to services at the 6th and Washington Church of Christ. If you're visiting with us, we're, we're pleased you could be with us and invite you back at any opportunity you have. If you are visiting with us, we'd ask you to fill out one of the attendance cards. You'll find them in the back of the pew in front of you. You can drop that in the collection plate as it's passed. If you have need of any of our facilities, we do have two nurseries. One is attended, one is unattended. Uh, so if you'd have need of that or anything else, there will be gentlemen waiting in the lobby to assist you. Uh, simply exit through the auditorium and back of the auditorium, and they'll help you find whatever you need. This morning, uh, Brad Pierce will be leading our song service. Les Mills will be leading our mind in an opening prayer. Rodney Cunningham will be reading our scripture. Greg Klein and Todd Haig will be serving at the table. And at the appropriate time, Roger will speak to us this morning about a man's role. Brad. Go ahead and sing number 682. Number 682. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body. That is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. To prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 732. Number 732. <clears throat> Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him 
him to the tree. me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when he rose up from the dead? Just as the example that we have of the early church in the New Testament, every first day of the week we gather around this table to remember our Lord and the sacrifice that he made for us. We have the unleavened bread that represents his body that hung and died on the cross and the fruit of the vine that represents the blood that was shed there that day. And it's through this that we remember him every week and the great sacrifice which he made. Would you please bow with me now as we give thanks for the bread. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your son and his willingness to come to this earth and to be a sacrifice for each and every one of us. We thank you so much for the love that was shown and the fact that he was willing to do so on our behalf. And we pray that you will please be with each one of us as we partake of this bread that represents his body. Help us to do so in a manner that is pleasing in your sight and keep our minds focused on him and the things that we should. And it's in Christ's name which we pray. Amen.
Bow with me. Father, as we continue this memorial, we give thanks for this fruit of the vine that represents the blood of our Savior that was shed for us. We're thankful he was willing to make this sacrifice. We pray that each one of us here can examine our lives and partake in a manner that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If we've accidentally ever looked anyone, if you'll raise your hand, we'll see that you'll be served. Though it's not a part of the communion service, this is a convenient time for us to follow another example of the early church as we give as we've been prospered. I ask that you will please bow with me again at this time. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all the many blessings that you richly bestow upon us each and every day of our lives. We know that everything that we have comes from you, and we thank you, Lord, for showering us with the many blessings that you do. Father, we pray that you will please be with each one of us now as we give back a portion of the material blessings that you have blessed us with. We thank you for our means of income, which we have, and we pray that you will please be with each one of us as we give back a portion to the church here. Help us to do so with a cheerful heart. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. We'll go ahead and sing number 276, number 276. <clears throat> I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. 
Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane than I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay, where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world, though Satan's hearts at me are hurled. For faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I've found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. If you're using your song books and like in turn to mark the song after the lesson, that will be number 600, number 600. And then you're going to need to have your song books for this next one. It will be number 555, number 555. And if you're able to, please stand with me. <clears throat> no. Lean on the mighty arm of Jesus, hide in the hollow of his hand. Neath his protecting wings abide you, firm on the rock of ages stand. Lean on his arm, hide in the hollow of his hand, lean on his arm, firm on the rock of ages stand, lean on the mighty arm of Jesus, wait you not for the morning dawn. Evening of life may come and find you, and with your strength and courage gone. Lead on his own. Hide in the hollow of his hand. Lean on his arm, firm as the rock of ages stand. Lean on the mighty arm of Jesus, for tis the only refuge sure. 
Let not another's invitation now from this hope your soul alone lean on his arm. I'm in the hollow of his hand. Lean on his arm. Stand. Lean on the mighty arm of Jesus and of his boundless mercy share. Drink of the ever living fountain down by the rock of ages there. Lean on his arm. On his arm, the past of rock of ages stands. Please see it. Bow with me, please. Gracious and Heavenly Father, God, we're so blessed to have this day, have this morning, the Lord's Day, that we can come together and gather as a unified body and worship you, the one and only true living God. We thank you so much for this day especially, where our nation honors the fathers. We're thankful for our fathers, God, and we thank you so much for everything that we've learned from them, good, bad, and indifferent, God. We thank you so much for the things that we've learned from them, especially the ones of us that were blessed to have Christian fathers, God, that taught us that we need to follow your ways and follow the example of your son. God, I can't imagine sending one of my children away to know that they would be mistreated and eventually crucified. What a loving father you are that you've done that for us by sending your son to come here and, and teach us how we need to be and how we need to treat one another. And the thanks he got for it, God, was he was nailed to a cross for it before they beat him unmercifully and mocked him. You tell us you'll never forsake us or leave us. But in that instance, you had to forsake your son and let that happen to him. What a wonderful and loving father you are. And as Christians, and as fathers, I can't imagine the disappointment you must have when most of this earth doesn't believe in your son, and a lot of them don't even believe in you, God. I know you can handle it, but it must be so disappointing because you are so loving. We look at the love around us, the Christians that are in our lives, and we can see the love that they show other people and the examples that they are. May we take those examples, God, and focus on those things while we're here on this earth and not focus on the negativity and the sin that is all around us. And help us to be examples to those who don't know you. 
to be loving to them and, and show them that you can be a Christian and live a good life, a fun life, a joyous life. We thank you so much for each and every member here that labors, the teachers, and the ones that take care of the buildings. And we thank you for Roger and Harry and everybody that has the courage to, to teach us lessons and do Bible studies and devotionals. We thank you so much for them. I'm thankful for the ones that have taught my children. Both of them are now baptized, and you all had a part in that. And I'm so thankful that me and my family are here. We're thankful for the Bible. We thank you that we can use it as a shield for the sin that's going to face us every day, God. We know how to battle it. We know how to get around it. As we know, Satan would want nothing better than to see one of us fall away. We thank you so much for everyone here again. We thank you for this beautiful day you created. We thank you for this beautiful earth that you created for us, God, to enjoy. And again, please be with the fathers today. May this be a special day for all of us. But more importantly, we thank you because you're the father of us all. And we ask these names and we ask this in Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading will be from the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 5.21 to chapters 6, verse 4. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the, is the, head of the wife, is also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ has also loved the church and gave himself for her with the washing of water by the word uh, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or, or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wives, or he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admon admonition of the Lord. We are, as you have probably already noted, grateful for your presence today and especially if you're visiting with us. Appreciate Les leading our prayer this morning and you probably gathered from that. Uh, the Mills family is a happy family today. Uh, Lydia was baptized last Sunday morning and Joe was baptized uh, last year, I believe, or perhaps longer than that now. Time flies by. but. Uh, great news. Uh, we're always happy uh, to see those who know the truth obey it, and it's our prayer that uh, they'll have a long and faithful life of service in the kingdom of God. Rod read the scripture this morning. Caitlin and the boys are still in Tennessee. 
uh, keep them in your prayers. Diane told me that you're driving down or going down and driving them back and uh, hopefully be home soon, uh, whole family together. Yesterday was a celebration of Bill Horton's 90th birthday and uh, it was a great, great uh, afternoon. Uh, the boys were all here with the exception of Mark who was sick and unable to be out for it. Uh, one of those things that just happens, but Paul and Sylvia headed back to uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area this morning, and Craig and Diane back to the Baltimore area, but Keith and uh, his daughter Shelly are with us this morning. They fly back to the Oakland area later this afternoon, but it's good to see them here with us this morning. I want to mention that uh, Dennis and Kathy Dye are visiting today. They bought a home in Marietta. Uh, Dennis will be retiring next spring, and they'll be moving back to this area. They're seated in Left Church about, uh, well, I, th I thought they were in Left Church. I don't see them now. They may. Oh, yeah, Left Church far, far to my right. Uh, Dennis, would you and Kathy mind standing? Because I know you're not bashful, and I want people to see you. Greg's mowing their lawn, and if Greg doesn't mess up and drive them away, they'll be with us uh, when they move back to this area next year. But hopefully you'll get to know them. Uh, Dennis was an elder in the church at Bridge Street in New Martinsville. Uh, his mom and dad, Willis and Juanita Dye, when I first moved here many, many, many years ago, were frequent visitors to our assemblies and uh, great servants in, in the church. So get to know uh, Dennis and Kathy as soon as you can. Encourage them uh, to move here as quickly as possible. Appreciate Brad leading our singing today. Tim, who normally leads our singing, is in Texas on business uh, today uh, through the week. We'll be back here next Sunday. Uh, Todd did a great job in Bible class, and this coming Lord's Day and the following, uh, Brad will be teaching from Hebrews chapters 4 and 5. We had a fantastic Tuesday, our VBS Kids Day, and I simply can't say enough positive things about uh, all the effort that went into that. It amazes me what our teachers and those involved with that, pro that program do just in preparation leading up to the day, and it was a tremendous success. Our thanks to Tom and Tracy and Harry and, and so many others I can't possibly name all of you. Uh, Kathy, I know Kathy Gerber and uh, Darlene Ogletree actually took vacation in order to come and, and be a part of that program, and uh, we appreciate the commitment and the sacrifice of everyone, and I know the kids uh, really benefit from it. wanted to mention one other thing. I am going to deal with our text, if you're wondering, but uh, John and Bev are headed to Cleveland this afternoon. Uh, Josh has won an award for a film that he's produced, and uh, I understand it must be quite good if he's gotten an award for it. And uh, if you'd like to know more about that, you see uh, John and Bev, and they'll be happy to tell you all about it. I know that uh, folks from Ohio University acted in it, and uh, I'm uh, very proud of what Josh has been able to accomplish, and I'm sure they'd be very happy to update you on that. I'd tell you more, but I get it wrong, and so I'll just leave it in their hands, but uh, pray for their safe travels this afternoon, and others will be on the road, and I'm sure they'll be happy to update you. Now, today is Father's Day. As you know, many of you, this is the first Father's Day I've experienced without my dad. Uh, about three weeks before he passed, I went in and installed some railings for him to help him a little bit in the bathroom. As I finished up, he looked at me and said, you know, son, I'm not going to need those very long. He lasted uh, three weeks afterwards, but they were three of the best weeks of his life. And, you know, as I think about this day, I have no regrets. I'm thankful that I had the kind of father that Todd described in Bible class this morning. There was no counting. Uh, he spoke and I listened, or I regretted that I didn't listen. That's the way it was growing up. I don't know if you recognize the family on the board behind me or not. If you are my age, you can identify them without any difficulty at all. If you're younger, you may struggle. But this is the Anderson family. Jim, 
Margaret, Betty, Bud, and Kathy, or Kitten, as his, her dad often called her. They were the epitome of the wholesome family in America when I was a youngster. And when you watch this television program, Father Knows Best, every episode taught a valuable lesson. I was thinking as I thought about this particular presentation and, and the picture that I wanted to represent uh, family today, that the only modern equivalent would be the Simpsons. Quite frankly, that's the truth. A survey was done not that long ago, within the last 10 years, regarding the portrayal of families on television, and fathers in particular, and guess who won out as the best father? Homer Simpson. Seriously, you know they worship on a regular basis, the Simpsons, and they talk about God. Now what Homer says is usually not worth hearing, but at least he makes the effort. In so many homes today, that's not the case. God is simply not a part of the modern family. And the modern family today, if you get my drift, is a family that is in so many ways counter to everything those of us who are Christians and honor the Word of God hold near and dear. And I really believe that many of the problems that we are experiencing as a society today can be directly attributed to the fact that the kinds of homes and families that were represented fictionally by the Anderson family are in very short supply. And the cement that was designed by God to keep a family together and strong and vital isn't found in a lot of homes and families these days. Sadly so. The foundation of marriage, home, and family, as you well know, is love. But it's a certain kind of love described by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now I have mentioned many times in the past that in the Greek language, there are four words that are translated by our single English word, love. There is agape, philia, storge, and eros. And those four words are all encapsulated in the single word love in the English language. That word doesn't really do justice to the concept that is described in 1 Corinthians 13. The word that Paul used in that setting is agape. And it is a word that conveys not just feelings and emotions, but involves our intellect and challenges us to do what is right even when what is right is not what we want ourselves. And it focuses not so much on how we feel, but how we think, and how our thinking dictates, in turn, how we act. So Paul describes this kind of love, which is the, the bond of a solid marriage and a good home, as being patient, kind, not envious or boastful, not arrogant or rude. It is not irritable. I'm not always loving if that's the case, by the way. I get irritable from time to time. I suspect we all do. And we're not being loving when that happens. But we are, and Todd mentioned this several times in our study this morning from Hebrews 3. We're not sinless, but God doesn't call us to be sinless. He calls us to be faithful. And sometimes we don't measure up fully to the definition, but it's there before us. And our goal is to have this kind of love in all of our relationships, but especially in our marriage and family. It doesn't rejoice in wrong. It rejoices in truth. It bears, believes, hopes, endures all things. Now, when you look at this definition, what can you say about the nature of the love that binds home and family together? 
It seems to me to be obvious it's sacrificial. I think back on my own upbringing, and I, I can recall over and over again the sacrifices that my parents made for me, my brother, and my sisters. They didn't do it because they had to do it. They did it because they loved us. I can think of the sacrifices that my mother made for my father. And she made them not out of obligation, but out of love. This kind of love that is described by Paul is a caring love. When you look at the Gospel of Luke, and in particular chapter 10, you are introduced to a story that has, since it flowed from the lips of Jesus, resonated with people around our world. The story of the Good Samaritan. It's a story about genuine love or caring, compassion, if you please, that always produces action. I would submit to you that the kind of love that is described by Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 and the, the cement of marriage and family today is tough love. It makes demands. It has standards. It holds folks accountable. I'll say a little bit more about that later this morning in our message. But the fact of the matter is today, children are not being held accountable because parents are not loving their kids as they should. They are going to the grocery store, the supermarket, the, the pharmacy, and they're climbing the shelves. They're yelling for everything. They're making demands. And parents are not willing to be tough enough to just say, on occasion, no, and mean it. That's a love issue. When you love people the way you should, you want their best. And remember the illustration of the family, father knows best? Guess what? In the home, children ought not be in charge. And they don't know what is really best. And it's up for parents. It's really up to us to love them enough to say no and give them the kind of direction that young people need in order to mature. It's a compassionate love, very similar to caring. It's also unbreakable. I've told you before, I cannot under any circumstances imagine not loving my kids. They can break my heart. They could do things that cut me to the core, but they're my kids. And I can't imagine not loving them. And I say that out of the context of God's attitude toward us. Less in his prayer this morning mentioned the fact that so many in our world don't even acknowledge God. Guess what? He still loves them. And that love is overwhelming, incomprehensible, and unbreakable. If we brought that kind of love to marriage, home, and family, imagine how transformative that would be. Now, I said all of that as introduction so I can spend just a little time with one of the most familiar stories in the ministry of Jesus. It's recorded in Luke chapter 15 amidst the stories of the lost coin and the lost sheep. There is the story of the lost son, the prodigal, if you please. There's a lesson in this story on the responsibility of fathers in the home to be providers, to see that the needs of their families are met. I think everybody acknowledges that that is a role for fathers to for fulfill. I think sadly some people think it's the only role that they are to fulfill. But we're not only to make sure that the bills are paid and that there's food on the table and, and a roof over our heads. There's a lot more demanded than simply seeing that everybody's fed and clothed. But in this story, as Jesus tells it, this is a home where even the servants are well fed and well clothed. Not just the children, but the servants as well. The servants in the father's house, the young man realized, were doing much better than he himself. Now, let me set the stage for you just in case you don't know the story. This is a home with two sons. 
the youngest approaches his father with the request, give me my inheritance now. Now under the law, as you know, his inheritance will not be that of the elder son. The double portion went to the elder son. The young man is asking that he get the lesser inheritance that would ultimately be due him while daddy still lived. And we know historically that this is not out of the realm of possibility. There are actually historical accounts of similar things occurring. So Jesus takes something that people are familiar with and he's able to utilize it to convey a very, very powerful message. The father reluctantly agrees to the young man's request. The inheritance is bestowed and as is often the case with young people, the first thing this young man wants to do is get away from home. And so he leaves. He takes his money with him. And he is surrounded by friends in his new home. But his money is not unlimited. And when he's exhausted his resources, he discovers his friends really weren't friends at all. And now he's in a foreign country, alone and hungry. He takes a job feeding pigs. He feeds them carob pots, and his belly is aching. He's almost to the point of eating the hog's slop when he realizes the servants in my father's house are doing better than me. Dad was a good provider. What was I thinking? Well, Dad was doing what dads are supposed to do, and this young man sadly wasn't thinking at all. It is so tragic that children are brought into this world by men who have no real feeling, feelings of responsibility for them. And I, I, I want you to think about that for a moment. Uh, Randy spoke to us uh, just recently on Wednesday night in our summer series about the number of fatherless homes in America today. Again, another explanation for where we are as a society. It is beyond the pale of comprehension for me to think that I could have a child and not be vitally involved in the life of that child. One of the responsibilities of fatherhood is not only providing the physical and material needs, but meeting the emotional responsibilities that go along. If you were listening carefully as Rodney read our text this morning, it specifically says, Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition, instruction of the Lord. There's so much more to being a father than simply engaging in the biological process that produces offspring. And this story illustrates that, though it is not the primary purpose there's also a lesson on communication in the story of the prodigal son. Look at verses 20, 12 and 21. On two separate occasions, the son approached the father with apparent ease. Are your children able to talk to you about anything? Or do they clam up when they're around you? A lot of that is determined by how we relate to them when they're younger. I've told you over and over again that the key to communication is not talking. It is learning to listen, to listen without interruption, to let, let young people, in fact, let anyone who wishes to speak, speak uninterruptedly so that they can get whatever is on their heart out in the open. And often all they need is to be heard, not to be guided and given advice and told what to do, just to be heard. And in this setting, in this story at least, the father is approachable. Every father ought to make a concerted effort to keep the lines of communication open. But you know what the three most common statements uttered by fathers are in the upbringing of their children? I'm too tired, we can't afford it, keep quiet. I kind of toned that one down a little bit because most fathers are not that polite. Isn't that sad? 
This father was approachable. All fathers need to be approachable. And as we think about Father's Day and our role, I want us to open those lines of communication. When my father passed earlier this year for at least a week, perhaps longer, every day between 11 and 11.30, I would start to pick up the phone. And then I realized I can't talk to him anymore. I talked to him every day, visited as often as I could. I still miss those conversations. And he was not a conversational. He talked more to Bill Wharton most days than he would to me. Bill would go in with me, and they'd just sit and go on and on and on. Of course, Bill can carry a conversation, but Dad just loved to visit with Bill. I miss those conversations myself. And I make sure that I talk to my children on a regular basis. If they didn't call, they would get a call, a text, an email. Just want to know that they're okay. Want to stay a part of their lives. And we talk every day. That will not happen by accident. It takes real effort. I'm not in the business of telling them what to do. Although when they call almost generally through the day, one of them has a question about, Dad, what do I do now? And that's a good thing. But it won't happen unless you keep those lines of communication open. In this beautiful story, this father did. In this story, there's a lesson about allowing one's children to grow up, in this case, this man's son. Yeah, I can imagine, I think, how Dad must have felt when the young man said, what my inheritance? Want it now? Give it to me. But he did. He didn't argue. He didn't say no. He didn't give him, as far as I can tell, a lecture about how foolish this was. The story tells us of a father, and it's a story. I understand that. But in this story, this father realizes that kids have to learn some things on their own. And you've got to let them fail. And if you try to prevent that, you're doing them a tremendous disservice. Because when they do grow up and they get out into the world, they're going to confront failure everywhere around them. Everybody isn't a winner. Everybody doesn't get a trophy. We fail. And the sooner we learn that, the better we are. We can't. We shouldn't try to shield our children from failure. It's one of the ways that they learn and grow and mature and Fathers who understand this will be better fathers as a result. In our story, Dad understood that this son needed to learn the hard way. And he did. Yes, in this story, there's also a lesson on compassion. The young man in the foreign country with his belly empty and his pockets empty, said, you know what? I, I'm not worthy to be a son anymore. I will go home and I will say to my father, Dad, I'm, I'm not worthy to be your son anymore, but would you make me one of your hired servants? I don't know that he ever got those words out because Dad saw him coming from a great distance and when he arrived, he wrapped his arms around him. I'm a hugger. I could not think of leaving my kids or my grandkids or my wife without hugging them. That's just my nature. I happen to think that's a good thing. This dad was a hugger. And he is elated. And why? That which was lost has been found. He loved his son. And even though he'd gone through his inheritance, he'd made a complete mess of things. He's home. It can be better. There is love and forgiveness. That's what family, home, 
and fatherhood ought always to provide. And who is our example for this? Our Father, who art in heaven, who no matter what we do or say or how hard we fall or fail, is always there for us to wrap his arms around us and say, I love you. It's okay. I understand. He put a robe on his son's back, sandals on his feet, and a ring on his finger, and threw a party. That's love. Now, it's true that there was an older brother who wasn't very happy about all of this, and he represents in the story, in my judgment, the Pharisees. That's another lesson altogether. Please know that there are two sons, and don't imitate the example of either because one failed when he demanded his inheritance, the other failed when he didn't love his own brother and didn't rejoice when that which was lost had been found. Let's never forget a lesson on compassion and love. And then there's a lesson on forgiveness and restoration. Yes, you left. Yes, you wasted your inheritance. Yes, you broke my heart, but you're my son. I love you. I will always love you. You're part of the family again. Ephesians 4.32 reminds Christians, be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. That's the kind of father we all should strive to be, gentlemen. And this is the kind of home that all of us should seek, a home where God is central where God's word guides our steps, where love rules in our hearts and determines our actions, and where people find the only real safe space there is in America or this world, where you're loved unconditionally, accepted as you are, and you know that there are those you can always count on. Give your children, gentlemen, the thing they need most, a good example, a life of service in the kingdom of God. Love them with all your heart. Love their mother with all your heart. And build your life and your relationship on the principles of God's word. You know, in my 40-some years of preaching, I was never home on Father's Day to be with my dad was only home one Mother's Day for five minutes. My son was on a bicycle, rode into a barbed wire fence, and we hit to the hospital. And to this day, I'll not forget that Mother's Day. But I loved my parents. I saw it every day they were alive to honor them. And I owe them a debt I can never repay. It is my hope that I can do the same for my children. It's my challenge that we will all be guided by God's word and lay a foundation that makes for a strong, healthy, happy home and family. And today, as we honor fathers, we can remember that God has a role for us that is vital and we need to embrace it. We'll sing the song that Brad selected in a moment. If you're not a Christian, let me encourage you to unite your home in Christ. Become a child of God and live according to his word. Or if you've done that and you've lost your way, I invite you to come back home. The prodigal did and found the forgiveness of his father. And we can find the forgiveness of our father in heaven as well if we will just repent and seek it as his wayward child. If you're subject to his call. If there are areas where you need to make improvement, lead determined, resolve to do just that, and to build a life, a home, and a family that will bring glory and honor to God. If we can help you, will you make your desires known as we stand and sing? Let him have his way with thee.
His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Would you have him make you free and follow at his call? Would you know the peace that comes by giving all? Would you have him save you so that you need never fall? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with me. Would you in his kingdom find a place of constant rest? Would you prove him true each providential test? Would you in his service labor always at your best? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Please see it. Bonnie Cunningham has come forward this morning and asking for the prayers of the church. There are challenges, just as all married couples face, you know, we, we, we have things we have to work through, and that's a growing experience we need to go through together. And they're just having some challenges right now that they're, they're needing the prayers of the church, they need our support. And um, so if you join me in a moment of prayer, let's go to God for Ronnie's behalf. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the avenue of prayer, our opportunity to pour out our hearts and needs to you, the t opportunity we have to recognize our need and confess it to you. Father, we know that each of us as young couples, there are challenges we face, there are things we need to work out together, there are mountains we need to climb together and get over, and we pray that you'll be with Rodney and Caitlin, help them through these challenges, help them to find a solution that they work on together, help them to grow uh, stronger together through this experience and come out a stronger and healthier couple. Father, each of us face such challenges in our relationships throughout the, the things we do, and we would ask you to be with us in all those things we do and help us to work on those relationships in a way that would please you and glorify you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Several announcements to share with you this morning. Among those who are ill to keep in our thoughts and prayers, in Youngstown is Raymond Williams, that Williams, sorry, that is Catherine Venom's brother. In Memorial is Carolyn Majors. Ron Vanway was in the hospital and is now home. And Susie Patterson is now at OSU Harding uh, facility. We celebrate uh, the baptism of uh, Lydia Mills as uh, she was baptized last Sunday. So if you've not had an opportunity, please uh, see her and con congratulate her on that decision and welcome her to the congregation. We extend our sympathies to the family of Esther Abbott. That's Ruth Forshee's aunt. Memorial services will be held Friday, June 23rd at 11 a.m. in the building with visitation from 10 a.m. until the time of services. Again, thank you to all who participated in the VBS Day Tuesday. 
Uh, there were 34 children in attendance, and it was very well uh, run, and, and kids all seemed to have a whole lot of fun. There are some sign-up sheets available in the foyer. Uh, we do need some volunteers to assist with the uh, uh, scheduling pictures for the new church directory. So if that's something you'd like to help with, uh, please stop by and sign up on the sheet. A reminder of the Secret Sister program. Uh, if you would like to participate, there are still sign-up forms. Uh, they're available on the table out in the lobby. And please turn those into the office. If you have any questions, you can see Donetta or Laura today, as Caitlin is not here today. I invite you back for all of our services. Anything, anytime you can be with us. Uh, next opportunity will be this evening at 6:30. Uh, Wednesday, we'll have a 7 o'clock Bible study. We'll, we're currently in our uh, summer series study. And, of course, on uh, next Sunday morning, 9 o'clock for Bible study, 10 for worship. I invite you back this evening for Roger. Uh, we'll be speaking on the topic of The Word Became Flesh. And following our final song, Harry Ogletree will lead our minds in a closing prayer. Right. Go ahead and close out this morning with number 206. Number 206. If you're able to, please stand. Mm. I am the vine, and he are the branches. Bear precious fruit for Jesus today. Branches in him, no fruit ever bearing. Jesus has said, he taketh away. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. I am the vine, be faithful and true. As what he will, your prayer shall be granted. The Father loved me, so I have loved you. Now ye are clean through words I have spoken. Living in me, no fruit ye shall bear. Dwelling in you, my promise unbroken. Glory in hand with me ye shall share. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. I am the vine, be faithful and true. Ask what ye will, your prayer shall be granted. The Father loved me, so I have loved you. Yes, by your fruits the world is to know you. Walking in love as children of day. Follow your guide, he passeth before you, leading to realms of glorious day. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. I am the vine, be faithful and true. Ask what he will, your prayer shall be granted. The Father loved me, so I have loved you. We pray with you, please. Dear God and Father in heaven, we are grateful and thankful that we get to call you Father, that you love us so, and give us the ultimate example on how to love our own children and those uh, in our lives. We are grateful for this morning that we get to worship you in spirit and in truth, that we get to encourage each other in this precious faith that we share, and that, Father, we get to grow in all areas, and that uh, regardless of where we are and what age we are, we continue to trust and uh, hope in you and in our Lord, and we are so thankful for that. For those whose fathers are living, our prayer and hope is that they're able to communicate and spend time with them in a joyous way. And if there's challenges, may they mend those. And for those of us who've lost our fathers, may our memory inspire us to live and be better fathers ourselves. We thank you so much for our Lord and thank you for the avenue of prayer and thank you for the saints that encourage us so and 
Our prayer and hope is that we'll be all that you want us to be in this world. Help us to fulfill the will that you have for each of our lives. We thank you for the youngest to the oldest. Help us to rejoice in our Lord and help us, Father, to be strong in the power of his might. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, and grant us the ability, Father, to keep being faithful even in the face of adversity. We just praise you and thank you so much for this day, for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.